So I put up the definition of R not, and it's kind of a funny spelling, and the pronunciation of N O U G H T is just N O T not. So what it means, and the definition is here, we're just going to go through it. What it means is the number of new cases that an existing case generates on average. So the way I think about it is just in math terms, if you have R not, you can just take literally the new number of cases divided by the existing number, and that should give you the average, right? And then a couple of uh, you know points here over the infectious period. And of course, some infections can be infectious for, let's say, a few days. And some are going to last for years. In fact, some can last for decades, where you can still spread it even 30 years after you first got it. Uh, and then in a susceptible population, what that refers to is kind of a not vaccinated population. So not vaccinated. Or you can think of it as a group that has never seen this infection before. So maybe they are folks that had never naturally gotten this infection either. But basically their immune systems are seeing it for the first time and are susceptible to, to making them sick. So for me, the, the easiest way to kind of think through this is to kind of just uh, come up with some examples. And so imagine you have four infections. I'm just going to arbitrarily name them A, B, C, D, right? So four infections. And each of these infections, let's say we kind of go in to a community and we say, how many of you guys have these infections? And we find that each of them, just to make the numbers easy, they all start out with four people having each of these infections. Okay. So we decide to go into the future. We say, all right, we're going to follow you up some point in the future. And, and it's going to depend on which infection. So maybe this one will have to come back decades later because this one is infectious for decades. So we have to give it a, an appropriate amount of time. This one, we can come back some weeks later, maybe some days later over here. You know, it can depend on each one, right? So it's just each one is dependent on how long it's infectious for. So you come back at some time point in the future, and for A, you find out that this person gave it to somebody, and this person gave it to somebody. And these other two right here, they actually didn't end up giving it to anybody, this, this infection. So you'd say, all right, well, well what is the r not, right? So the r not is going to be new cases, which is 2 over old cases, which is 4, or existing cases. So R0 equals 0 0.5 here. And what about B? Well, in this one, let's say you get two people over here. Let's say this person gives it to somebody, and this person also gives it to nobody. So you, again, you just count up the numbers, and you say, well, okay, here we have 4 divided by 4 equals 1. So again, it's an average. So even though some people gave it to more and some people gave it to less, the average is going to be 1. And for C, you know, similar kind of thing, I can say, well, let's say you have a few people getting it, you know, maybe two over there, maybe one over here, and this person gives it to, let's say, three people, right? So in total, I've got uh, four, five, six, seven, eight. Actually, let me make these numbers even nicer. So let's just say we've got eight people total. So R0 equals eight divided by four. We started with four, and in this case, R0 equals two. And D, I'm just going to make this one almost ridiculous sounding, but let's say we have tons of people that get sick. So this one, for whatever reason, a lot of people, when we come back, you know, a few weeks later, uh, we see that just many, many, many people have gotten sick. And of course, on average, we're going to have to take the total number of people that we see here and just divide it by the number four. So I'm just going to quickly scrawl this out. Let's see what we get here. I'm going to get up to, I'm trying to get to 72. Let's see if I just, uh, I don't want to overshoot that number. So we've got 30, we've got 40, 50, 60, and then I've got to do 72. So this one, whoops, this one divided by 5, what do you get? You get 72, sorry, divided by 4 rather. 72 divided by 4 is going to give us 18, right? So this one has an R naught of 18. And I wanted to visually show that to you just so you can see kind of what that would look like. And so, so far, you know, this is all making sense. And we can say, okay, well, you know, we don't have to worry about these, these first folks anymore because we already followed them for as long as we needed to, right? So they're not going to spread it anymore because we, we made sure that we followed them for weeks or days or decades, whatever, we're, you know, whatever the infection requires. But now we're interested in these blue folks, right? So we want to know, well, how, how are they going to spread it? Let's start with this one right here. Let's say this person spreads it to a single person. This person spreads it to one, let's say one, one, and 
to, and this person sends it to nobody. Let's actually just quickly make sure I do the math here. So this is a future time point, even further in the future, I guess. And now our R naught is, again, you have to think about new versus existing, right? So existing, we had two blue ones. So we had two down here, and we have one new person here. So our R naught value is going to stay fixed. And that's kind of the idea I want to want to express. The R naught is not going to change. It's kind of a, a measure that we we think is unique to a particular infection. So four over four remains one. R naught over here, I just said is not going to change. So we can we can already kind of assume what's going to happen. It's going to be okay. Well, on average, it's going to be two. So maybe some less, some more, but overall, it's going to be that number, right? So we're going to get something like this, and that also kind of easily tells you how quickly it's going to spread. It's going to double every time you come back. So every few days, if that's if that's what this is. Every set number of days, it's going to double. So you're going to say, okay, instead of we started with 8, and now we have 16. And over here, with this one over here, it's just going to be an enormous number, right? It's going to be 72 times 18, which equals, uh, I actually did the, the math here, is 1,296 cases that are new, and we started with 72. So that's R naught of 18. So this is, I'm not, I'm not going to draw all that in, but just a lot, right? A lot of people. So what you can already kind of see happening here is that when you have an R naught less than one, which is kind of the case here, you basically see that this is going to start dying out. So this this infection starts to die out. And it's it's almost gone already. And we started with four, we only have really one person left with this infection. Over here, when R naught equals one, exactly one, it's going to be stable. So kind of moving over time, you see that the same number of people, in this case four, are going to have the, the infection. And over here, when R naught is greater than one, and it depends on you know how much greater, it's going to spread. So the infection is spreading. And this is why this number is so in, important. It's, it's helpful. And to add a little bit of context here, Ebola, for example, has uh, got an R naught of about two. So that was a the example I had in mind when I wrote that down. And infection D, this is a little bit like measles. So measles, you can see, is much, much more inclined to spread than Ebola, for example. All right, now, so before I leave you feeling completely hopeless about this situation, because this, this looks pretty scary the way that these infections are spreading, let me point out something. So I don't want it to seem like you can't actually intervene. And, and in fact, there's a, a few things we can do to reduce the spread of these infections uh, that have these high R naught numbers. Uh, one of them would be to block transmission. So you can make sure that if you have a sick patient, uh, they are isolated. If you have a healthy person that has to be around them, for example, let's say a nurse or doctor or something, uh, you can make sure that they're wearing protective clothing. So you could isolate the patient. You can wear protective clothing. All these kinds of things help to block transmission, right? Uh, and in addition, you can also think, okay, well, what if, um, what if a person does actually get uh, exposed to an infection? For example, let's say measles. This is actually a great example. Uh, and, and Ebola doesn't fit this second category, unfortunately, not yet, uh, today being October 12th. But we have vaccines against measles, right? So you can actually vaccinate people. And in, in the case of measles, it would be MMR. So measles is MMR vaccine. And if you actually use this vaccine and uh, it has a certain effectiveness, that effectiveness prevents a lot of folks that have had the vaccine from getting sick. And so these are a couple of ways to reduce the spread of these very, very infectious agents.